Um, welcome, everybody. My name is Hisham Zarifi. I am an associate professor um, in forest resources management in the Faculty of Forestry. I am also the chair of the Faculty of Forestry's Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion Council. I would like to start by acknowledging that for at least some of us uh, uh, hosting, for those of us hosting this, this webinar, we are at UBC and so therefore on the traditional and unceded territories of the Musqueam people. And uh, I would urge those of you who are participating in this webinar from off campus of UBC um, to take a look and see perhaps where, uh, where you are and who the indigenous groups may be uh, that uh, are, are whose lands you are on at the moment. Um, there is a website, native-land.ca, which uh, allows you to, to do that. And I would encourage you to, to look at that. Um, as a way of introduction, this is the first in a series of lunchtime uh, seminars that we would hope to have that is focused on issues facing forestry through the lens of equity, inclusion, diversity, and anti-racism. Um, our uh, very first one here is on reduced mobility in the forest, and I'm very excited to, to uh, listen to, um, to this, but we will have a whole set of them um, roughly every couple weeks. Um, and I would encourage you to keep an eye out um, for these on uh, the Faculty of Forestry website, uh, the Twitter feeds, etc., cetera, uh, newspaper, uh, the newsletter emails, um, and participate in future events as well. Uh, I would like to acknowledge uh, that uh, this uh, whole lunch series is an initiative of the EDI Council and uh, Sarah Gergel, Professor Sarah Gergel, who's our Associate Dean for Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion on behalf of the whole Faculty of Forestry. But um, the real heavy lifting here has really been uh, Estefania uh, Mia Morano, and um, she is our, are gonna be hosting this one as well as the future ones and has done an amazing job in bringing all of this together. So we really thank her for um, taking the lead on this and, and putting together what is going to be a really wonderful series, I, I feel, um, that will allow us to have some, some, hopefully some very interesting and deep conversations about EDI and anti-racism within forestry and within the Faculty of Forestry. And so with that, I will turn it over to Estefania. Thank you so much, uh, Hisham. Um, we are so excited and today we're going to start this series of webinars with Maria Jose Aguilar Carrasco, who's connecting all the way from Spain. And so a little bit about Maria Jose. Maria Jose is a PhD candidate in transportation and territory infrastructures in the urbanism department of the Universitat Politecnica de Valencia in Spain. Um, she holds a degree in environmental sciences and agricultural engineering and is a member of Euphoria Lab from the Faculty of Forestry. Um, so uh, we welcome you, uh, Maria Jose. Tell us, tell us uh, how are you feeling and, and a little bit about, uh, well, this is the webinar about lunch, <laughs> even though you are closer to, to nighttime over there, but tell us what is your favorite dish? Hello, thank you so much for, for this uh, opportunity to be part of this uh, webinars at the lunchtime in, in Canada. And as you asked me about my favorite dish, uh, is the paella. The paella is the most famous uh, dish in, in Valencia. This is, is the land of the rice. And, and this is my favorite uh, the meal for lunch time. <laughs> Thank you, Maria Jose. So you prepared a presentation with some pictures and we just want to have a conversation about your experiences as a wheelchair user uh, and also as a researcher in this field. So I'm gonna 
start the presentation and you can tell me if I should go forward or I stay. So, tell us a little bit about these pictures. Well, uh, this is uh, two pictures about uh, the end and the beginnings. This is, is the last mountain that I claim before one year, just before my accident, mountain accident. And this is, is the, and the other, it's the first time that I went to the forest with my wheelchair. That is why I used these two pictures to define the ends and the beginnings. And this is, is a very important tree for me. This is a, a childhood tree. I spent all my childhood in my parents' village in a countryside, it's Alcaraz. It's a, a mountain village. And the first um, work or the first uh, research that I did was uh, a catalog of monumental trees in my parents' village. And this is one of these three that I include in, in this catalog. It's called, uh, its name, vernacular name is La Carrasca de la, Mar de la Marta. It is a Quercus ilex. It's very common, uh, this tree in, in Spain. And uh, it has a different common names, uh, Carrasca and Fina, also Chaparro in, in this area. And it was the first time that I climbed with uh, my wheelchair and uh, I feel like a freedom and, and it was a huge experience. And yes, definitely trees uh, saved my life and bring mm -hmm. me a spirit, a new spirit. And this is one of these trees. So it seems like a very old tree. Do you know how old might be? Yeah, we, we study the, the trees, but uh, we don't know exactly the age, but talking about uh, seniors, uh, maybe it has more than 200 years, this tree. Wow. And I also noticed that there was, it seems, this is the first time that you also added the bike to the wheelchair, is that correct? Yeah, yeah, this is the, the first time that I try my, my new device. If, if you saw the, the first wheelchair in the first picture, it was a very heavy wheelchair. And this is, is a, a light wheelchair, but it's called active wheelchair. And I bought this wheelchair and also the bike. And, and this is, is the device that I use uh, for enjoying the forest. Amazing. And we saw you with that uh, bike here in forestry, right? In the faculty? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I believe the people know me because my bike <laughs> in forestry. And um, I just also this kind of pictures uh, to solve the different barriers that I could find uh, around the forest in my first uh, um, experiments in the forest. Um, the first one is a hide because I, I love bird watching and I was in uh, Ibiza and he, I am trying to, to access to this hide but if you can see there is an, a small barrier, it's nothing but for us this is like a, a big mountain and the other is uh, I am trying the slopes and of course, <laughs> I need uh, help for, for up this, uh, this mountain. I am with my, with my cousin. And the other, that I am trying the different surfaces. The uh, surface is important for walk, walk, walkability in a wheelchair. There is another in a national park, uh, Islas Dies in Galicia. And you can see the, there aren't any access to the beach for wheelchair users. And the other is the last part of a accessible track that you can see this, the steps. So um, 
we talk a lot a little bit about this uh, before uh, if you could share with us the picture on the left corner in the upper side uh, i don't know if you can see my mouse this one yeah i um, can see could you please uh, tell us a bit more about this uh, project? Because if I recall correctly, you mentioned that they try to be accessible for wheelchair users. That there was an attempt to be accessible, but in the practical point of view, uh, it wasn't quite like that because uh, there is a, a bench, you know, in, yeah. that is okay. making this very difficult. Yeah, this is a new equipment in this area. It's a, a wet lamp and the height, inside of the height, is accessible for a wheelchair user because they use a, two different uh, places. One place for just for a wheelchair without any bank and the other is for people that, that can walk. And inside is perfect for a uh, bear watchers, wheelchairs, users, but the problem is we can access because this small step in a ramp is very difficult for us because I need to up my wheels for access. If I up my wheels and also I need to, to drive in a ramp with a, with a slope, I can do it two things at the same time. And this is, is the kind of, of things that um, you have um, you, you have an, an accessible equipment, but at the end is not useful for us. Yeah. In summary, is the, the government expend the money to facilitate the access for wheelchair users, but at the end is not useful. That's Do you think uh, that it might be because the peop those that are involved in the design are not are not wheelchair users themselves, perhaps? I believe uh, we don't have enough present presence in uh, in this kind of, of projects. That's the problem. Um, and also the project it's good, everything is, is okay. But the, the problem was when they, do, when they did the, the project, the emplacement of everything is just one, one boot more. You know, mm -hmm. the, the, the question is finish the, the project uh, well. Yeah, yeah. So here we have some more pictures. Can you tell us a little yeah. bit about them? This is, uh, I choose these pictures because if I can make easy the heritage, like uh, this kind of a building, is the uh, Roman theater in, Mer in Merida, why we can do it more? Because sometimes heritage, uh, the uh, all architecture is very difficult to, to be accessible. And this is an, um, a big example of we can do it. We can improve the access for all. We can do our heritage uh, feasible for everyone. And the other is a sensory path in Lozoya Valley. This is, is also a national park in Spain, in Madrid. And it's a high mountain a national park, and they did a, a walk, a sensory path. And this is, is the, a panel with the stones and for blind people to they can read the explanation and they can touch as well the different materials of these mountains. And I believe that this is, is a, a very a very good um, way. Um, to be more, more close the, the mountains. We can go to the mountains, but we can touch the mountains. And I love it, this idea. And so these are good examples. These are, yeah, this is how you do it. Are a good, uh, good examples. Uh, mm -hmm. There is a sensory path at Patsan Forest. This is the most similar forest than the uh, British Columbia Forest, uh, mm -hmm. humid forest, rainforest. And this is also a sensory path. Uh, blind people can walk around this path and they can touch the trees 
and they can feel the, the forest. And the sensation is like a, you are a part of this forest. It's not a, sometimes the accessible path or itineraries are like, like a, mm, you, you can feel the sensation that you are inside of the forest. Yeah. I wonder and, though, because it's if there is another wheelchair user coming in the opposite direction, um, how do you yeah. do it? Yeah, in this uh, in this path there are uh, like a, around maybe one hundred meters or or less, and uh, the space is uh, is bigger than the the oh, real. Perfect. Yeah, you have some some places for cross with people. That oh, is a, a thing to, to keep into account in this kind of uh, um, improvements or designs in, in the forest. And the okay. other is seen, oh, sorry. Can you I can go back. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And there is two examples more. One is the another height, accessible height for watching birds in the Tablas de Daimiel National Park. And the other is also uh, is uh, Islas Ties, Ties Island in, in Galicia, Spain. This is, is around the, the dunes uh, behind to the, to the sea. And one more examples of uh, good improvements in, in the forest for, for enjoying nature. And Islas Ties also and uh, Ordesa Monte Perdido National Park. This uh, national park is uh, very similar than Rocky Mountains National Park. And this walk, uh, this path, it's called the path for, for all people. In, in Spanish is El Camino de Todos. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I, I did a good translation. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it's like the pathway for everyone. Exactly, and I love this this name yeah. because uh, sometimes it's like a, you have an accessible path and other path, paths, paths, yeah. no? or other walks. And uh, I believe we need to try to improve the the access the the access in in the forest for all the people. Yeah. Because I like to go to the forest with my friends, mm -hmm. and not all my friends are wheelchair users. Yeah. And yeah, more wetlands, Tablas de Daimiel is a wetland. And the last one is the, the view of the, of the mountains where when the, this path, uh, the, the walk for, for all the people finish. And all of these are a good experience in, in Spain. And I think we you are have now... a story to share here. Yes. <laughs> Yes, always there are angels <laughs> everywhere. And this is a Pacific Spirit uh, Park behind to UBC. This is, is my first experience in, in Canada, in the forest. And, and I walk around, the, around this forest, but there is an accessible track. But I decide in, in some moment to break the rules and go around a other, other way. <laughs> and I don't know if uh, the audience can, can watch the, Im the image. There is a tree and the roots are just in the middle of the path. Mm. I don't know if uh, you can see well. Yes, they and, see it, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, and this uh, point in the middle of the forest, I decided to stop because obviously I couldn't uh, walk more. And I was like a 30 minute, one hour, just uh, listen to the birds and connect uh, with the nature, with the trees and waiting for someone <laughs> that ha can help me. And then the other picture with two girls, they arrived and they were my angels in this, in this moment. Always there are good people everywhere. Sorry. 
Okay, and this is another example about equipments or facilities. And this is the botanical garden at UBC. And you can walk around the trees, up the trees, but this is, is not an accessible uh, equipment or facility. And I thought in this place, if it's necessary to bring this damage to the trees, or do that, and an equipment that can use all the people. And this is, is the question that I, I do myself, no? With kind of, of um, facilities as a society will be to the, to the people. And if the damage um, is, uh, sorry. Like it's worth it if, if it's not as accessible for all, something like that. No, it's the question exactly is uh, if it's accessible for all or not. Is mm -hmm. uh, if the damage uh, can, um, I believe I will tell you in Spanish and you yeah, can. Yeah. For sure. Si el daño que estamos haciendo vale la pena para el beneficio que genera. Yeah, oh, so it if it's worth it to, to do all this damage for the benefit that we're getting, especially exactly. because not everyone is able to yeah. go and enjoy it. Yeah, and I, uh, I do this question to myself when I think in how we can improve the access to the nature for enjoy all the people. Mm -hmm. Because um, the diversity, the society is too diverse. No, uh, we have some abilities, and other some others have other abilities. And um, what is the limit to to be more accessible? Mm -hmm. No, mm -hmm. um, and it's, this this is my main question. I want to to open the, the nature for all the people, but uh, it has a, a cost. Yeah. And yeah, it's like a, to find the balance between damage and benefit. Yeah. And I believe the, the line is it's very, very thin. Yeah. And this is part of your research that you're going to share with us at the end. Yeah. yeah. Exactly, this is my research. Well, this is, is the um, approve in, we, we were testing the different slopes and surfaces and uh, we are preparing the, the survey and we decide to, to make some pictures for be more visible the slopes because sometimes when, when you ask to the people, can you up with your wheelchair or can you walk around a, a path with 12% um, of the slope, the people can realize how much is this 12%. Mm -hmm. And we decide to try and make some pictures just for to be more more easy the responding this this question. This is also in Pacific Spirit Park. Oh. And yeah, well, and this is, is my paint <laughs> that I did because um, yeah, as I, I am a, a feather braining and I have a dream which I am living on a generous society where all individuals regard, regardless of disability, race, gender, social status can enjoy nature. I am walking, welling, <laughs> much more in this direction. And I would like that all the people um, come with me in to be uh, this trip or to do this, this trip where all the people can, can live together and enjoy nature. It's a call for inclusivity. And it's also, it seems like a coping strategy in COVID times, right? Um, I think that yeah. you've been... Yeah. 
I spend my time lot. painting <laughs> during the during the COVID time. Yeah, I discovered this uh, disability. <laughs> um, well, this is the the survey that I I did because. As I have an idea, and I have also my, my experience before my accident and, and right now as a wheelchair user, but I have an idea of how we can use the natural. But I would like to know the opinion of the rest of the people because um, with my experience, I can think, okay, I can do that or I would like to do that. But it's important in, in the academy, academia world to to ask to the people what they need or what they want because it's not the same using um, a wheelchair a light wheelchair or active wheelchair than mine or motor motorized wheelchair or um, i can move my my arms well and i want to take into account all the population uh, with mobility impairments. That is why I need uh, as much as possible responses of this uh, survey to focus uh, well my, my research and to try to, to give some ideas or, or projects where all the people can be included, not just an stereotype a wheelchair person that can move well and can develop well uh, around the, the forest or the city or whatever. I want to, to work for the people that can do mm, less than me. Mm -hmm. So this is very um, inspiring, Maria Jose, because uh, not only you are trying to, you know, provide ideas and exploring uh, different places across the, the globe um, with, with your wheelchair, but you are also interested in knowing what's the, ex the experience of other wheelchair users. Um, and so I, I would like to, before we pass to the Q&A section, uh, to really stress, uh, you know, uh, that it'd be amazing if, each person connected here can share this link. Uh, we're gonna keep on posting this uh, on Twitter, Facebook, and many, many of the channels um, that we have been using. But if you can share this link, uh, that'd be great because as you could see throughout Maria Jose's presentation, the need is, is very big. We need to make this accessible and she needs to understand what the situation, the more people respond, the better. And yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I need to know the opinion of Canadian because uh, the reality, the national parks in, in Canada are different than, than Spain. Canada, Canada is a huge country and I don't know if the people can go to the national parks, can enjoy, or maybe some people in a wheelchair never thought about to go to to the national park because they don't know if they can do it. Yeah. That is why I I need uh, as much as responses of this survey. That's great. So I'm gonna stop sharing the presentation so we can see you. And and now we're gonna open to the questions. Okay. Uh, people want to send the, their questions, that would be amazing. I want to start by asking you, what was your experience in the Faculty of Forestry? What things do you think, and this is a question that was passed by Sarah Gergel, uh, that can be, can, what can be improved um, for a wheelchair user? I tend to think that, and it makes me a bit nervous, uh, if there was ever a fire, you cannot use the elevator. So what do we, what do you do? Um, I don't know if, if you can share with us. Well, uh, so the match point to me from Canada that it was the first time that I watched it, it is the, the push up 
uh, before open the doors. This is a, a very good facility for, for us. This is a, Canada was the first place, the first country where I wanted this kind of, of facilities and I love it. This is very, very useful. But this is, is the good point. But in the, in the other hand, I believe that the UBC campus is very difficult, uh, for example, for uh, blind people. Because in, in, Can in Vancouver, and also when I went to Toronto the first time, uh, the, the urban planners don't use the um, tactile uh, pavement. And uh, honestly, I don't know how the uh, blind people can move around the city and how they know when they need to stop because they need to cross uh, a road or wherever. And, uh, I believe in UBC is very difficult for, for work with a stick. And this was one thing that I, I thought, oh, wow, why they don't use this kind of, of materials to be more easy to walk around, the, around the, the, this campus. And concretely inside of forestry, for example, the doors are so, so heavy. <laughs> but uh, yes, there is an a push uh, in doors before in, in the toilet or wherever, and you have the facilities. But uh, yeah, there are so, so heavy doors. And perhaps they thought we all had lumberjack arms. <laughs> Yeah, they yeah. have to change that. Um, yeah, I just but, to mind. <laughs> okay, Sorry. I don't have any problem with my arms, but oh, yes, they need yes. to, no, to think me. always in the worst situation that yes. people, they can move or they don't have yes. strong arms. And also other mm, think will be maybe the space. Is yeah. the uh, very the thin? Hallways? Yeah, very thin, and it's difficult. You need to arrive to the to the finish of the and yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, elevators, two elevators, and you can move. In my university here in Valencia, I used uh, this. I miss this kind of facilities in my home university. And um, that's all, well, mm, brain, the weather, yes. <laughs> but this is Canada, it's very green. <laughs> yes. I just want to remind all the attendees that they can leave uh, the questions in the chat. It is one of the icons close to um, share the screen, the participants, there is one that it says, chat. Um, we have some questions. So Hisham is asking, with your experience both in Europe and Canada, do you see any differences between the two in mobility in nature opportunities and why? Okay, in Canada, um, I don't have enough uh, experience to, to do um, a choice about uh, about an access in the nature because uh, unfortunately I couldn't uh, visit any national park that is my field work but I believe Canada try always to bring some facility hmm. that is my my feeling they yeah. try to, to be some, if there are, I don't know, if there are 10 walks, they try to, to have one or less. Yeah. And I didn't visit a lot. Just, uh, I went to Scotland in a wheelchair mm -hmm. and 
it wasn't really accessible country. Um, but it's a heritage uh, country as well. It's very difficult. You know, Europe is all. All this, mm. the cities yeah. are all, and it's very difficult sometimes to combine um, access and facilities and, and buildings and all building our heritage building. Yeah. And in Spain, it's not, this is not because I am, I am Spanish, but uh, because the, the act, um, the accessibility act in Spain is just the only act that uh, sometimes is not applied properly. Mm -hmm. But national parks uh, right now are doing um, a huge uh, work in, in order to improve the accessibility and the facilities for, for all the people. Yeah. Um, the first national park, for example, that did, did that was I was taught in the San Mauriti in Pyrenees. This is a high mountain and they did um, two paths, two walks around the around the national park and all the people can can know what is this national park and they can we can enjoy of the most uh, values of the national this national park yeah. and i believe we are doing a good uh, work in in this way it's it not might enough be like a, sorry go ahead no, it's not enough right now, yeah. but yeah, we are working in, in, this, in this way. It, it, I was just thinking that Canada, eh, Vancouver, I think it was, eh, they, they want to be one of the greenest cities and, and maybe that's a good opportunity to also make it accessible for all. There are many questions uh, in the chat, so let me go back to that. Um, so, Sorry, somebody is asking, um, maybe this is um, a, a question for people that have been mainly in Canada, but do you, are you aware of any law in Canada regarding accessibility? They yes. are very surprised to, to hear what you're sharing, your experiences here. Yes, there is the human rights chapter in, in Canada and also there is a specific acts in the different regions in Canada and right now British Columbia is working in the, a new act about accessibility and also uh, national parks are working in this way. Um, Yoho National Park that is the, the national park that I, I am studying in between with uh, I am doing a comparison between Yoho National Park and Aguas Tortes y Lestay de San Mauricio in Pyrenees in Spain. And they are um, working right now in the new master plan. Mm. And they want to include um, in, in this way, in the facilities and how they can do more accessible for all the people, the, this national park. That's amazing. And uh, yeah, I believe Canada has enough, uh, enough policies uh, and, uh, and acts to, to build um, a, uh, a country for all the people. Yeah. But uh, the reality sometimes is just um, Vancouver is, as you know, is green, is a lot of forest. Sometimes it's not easy to do it. Yeah. Yeah. But you yeah. also, you also were talking at some point in the Q and A that it seems that uh, UBC is not a very uh, friendly space for impaired, visually impaired people, and you mentioned the the tactile pavement. pavement. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Well, the tactile pavement, I'm not sure if it's the, the correctly word in English, I believe, yes. It's just, um, it's the pavement that you can use 
uh, focusing on the plain people. They cannot with their stick if they they can walk or they or they need to stop because they arrive to some um, um, oh, dangerous uh, dangerous places. For example, when they need to cross some road, they cannot um, throw this stick if they need to mm -hmm. stop. I don't know. Uh, this, this was a, a question that I did my, uh, to myself when I arrived to, to UBC. Maybe there, there, are some, there is some, some APP for walk around, the, around UBC mm -hmm. that I, I don't know. But it was like a, a question that I did. Oh, wow, how blind people can walk around UBC with the stick? Mm -hmm. Because everything is, is plain. Everything is the same pavement. Yeah, yeah. And I can, I can, you know, I can think of, there are some very busy times in May Mall or it's with all the buildings, so many, um, so many things in, in their surrounding yeah. that may, maybe even exactly. more. And other point important that I believe they don't take into account right now in UBC is the way funding. And it's very difficult also for me or for some people that arrived for the first time to UBC, the, the orientation or, you know, the way funding is important, not only yeah. for people with some disabilities or orientation uh, yeah. problem, it's, it's useful for new, new students. Yeah, yeah. So uh, Robin is asking if you could uh, kindly explain more about the different senses engaged in a sensory path experience. I was also, it was the first time that I, I heard of a sensory path experience. In one of your pictures, you had this. Uh, in, my, in, the, in the pictures, there are any, any part. I, I don't know if I can share, or maybe I can send you some example. By but email. just 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 very broadly, like uh, what 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 things are you can find in a sensory path experience? Well, the sensory path it's uh, just for indicate the direction, uh -huh. and is uh, for example in. Uh, if you want to indicate to the someone that this is, is the right way, the sensory path is like a lines. Yeah. And with the stick, they cannot, it's the line. The line. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And if it's the, a place when the people that can use the stick need to stop, uh, there is like, a, um, I, I don't know how do you say in English the word. You can say it in uh, Spanish, maybe we both try. Es como si fueran como unos pivotes para que, es como para... Um, there are some es, textures es, and... Se, se interrumpe esa línea con otro tipo de pavimento. Okay, okay. So, um, I think though it's, they're clarifying, sorry, maybe uh, I didn't explain it or read it uh, correctly, but it seems that um, they're wondering if the sensory path experience, there are other senses that you, that are incorporated. For example, you are talking about tactile um, surfaces where you can see if there is a change coming up, uh, but there might be also some hearing devices, mechanisms or smells also in a, in a sensory path? They're, they're wondering if there are other senses engaged in that experience. Okay, I send to you a link. Maybe okay. you can share by yeah. in the chat. Just Perfect. some yeah. example. Yeah. And so, well, I know that these uh, people with um, visual impairments can use uh, dogs, they, they have the dog, and the dog, it's a perfect uh, um, tool, it's not a tool, because yeah, it's yeah. A, a, a friend, more than a, than a friend, but uh, they, they are very useful to, 
oriented, no, for the orientation. But I believe this kind of, of uh, pavements are very useful as well. Yeah. So we have a question from the dean of the faculty, John Ines. He's saying very few national parks in Canada are accessible. Some claim to be, but they often have the type of problem you showed uh, with the hike. A small, a small steep for some, but a cliff for a wheelchair. How do yeah. you recommend educating the people creating these so-called accessible paths and viewpoints? Uh, he's suggesting us all to contact, uh, or no, sorry, he's su suggesting you to contact Rick Hansen Foundation, and it has provided a link that I can share later on with you. So, so the question is, uh, like, how do you educate um, the people that are designing these accessible parks? Well, if from my point of view, um, first of all, um, is the an analyzing the area uh, of the national park that can will be accessible in order to uh, or taking into account the slopes, the uh, pavements, materials, the forest, and whatever. It's just to think first. Well, this part of the national park maybe have more points to be accessible. And in this area, try to be, to make the facilities, to improve the facilities. Um, it's just uh, to try to combine the, uh, the points that we, we need, people with uh, mobility impairments or in general, no? people with, uh, with disability or diversity people. It's just to, to make a mix, to analyze first all the, uh, the, the area of, the, of this national park before to try to, to make the improvements. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I know, I know in, in Rocky Mountains, it's very, it's very difficult to, to improve the, the accessibility to walk around the whole national park because we are talking about high mountains and the slopes are difficult for us. I can up if 10 meters if the slope is more than 10%, that is nothing in a, in a mountain. But sometimes there are some areas, the important point is not to, I don't want to arrive to the top of the mountain, but maybe I can watch the mountain. Mm. No, it's just this, I can have the contact with the nature, but I don't need to arrive to the mountain. I don't want to, to put, uh, yes, to, to put an elevator for a ride to the top of the mountain because yeah. I don't need it and I believe anyone's needed to do that. The most important is to have this contact with nature, to have a real contact with nature and experience with the nature. There, there is um, also somebody uh, saying, how do we educate the park planners? Uh, so I, I think you've touched uh, some, some points here, but um, what's the take home message for park planners? Wow. <laughs> One point, okay. They need to take into account that there are different abilities. Sometimes inclusion is also information. Mm. My first analyze, analysis in my, in my thesis was about information. Mm. Because if um, the park uh, inform in the, in the website, for example, this park is not accessible, we can give you whatever you need. From me, from my perspective, I think, okay, they, they take into account my, my needs. Yeah. And this is also inclusion. Inclusion yeah. is more than architecture 
barriers, improve the architecture, or uh, just uh, communication tools, in technological tools. Inclusion is when the people take into account that the society is diverse. Yeah. This is the real inclusion. Think in all the people, in all the abilities or what called disabilities. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, you raise an important point. How do we connect with the resources? Sometimes the resources are there, but we just don't know or they are not there and we have to know. So yeah. I, I'm hoping that if not already there, maybe the, the faculty can, can be clear about that, uh, like add a line or two in the website. Um, here is another question. It says, have you seen any field-based courses that incorporate a broader view of accessibility and access to nature? Either in your, you know, studies in Spain or here, have you seen any content with regards to accessibility and access to nature? Like a manual, for example? Well, uh, there is a very interesting, uh, interesting website. It's called Europark. They publish a manual just for accessibility on national parks. So and it's, it's Euro Park. Euro Park. Perfect. Like uh, Europe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that finish in park. Is concretely, this is the number five, and this is, is a, a fantastic manual wow. about um, the things that you need to keep into account in order to improve the accessibility. I use it in my in my dissertation, and I believe it's a very good manual. And also in Spain, the Spanish Blind Association have another manual. I can send these manuals and, and you can publish it, in, yeah. the, in the website of Forestry or whatever. Yes, please. Yes, because uh, and I will try to find an English version. If not, because people I should learn Spanish. Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so on the counterpart, on people that want to be helpful, uh, I, I learned with you that, for example, it's not helpful for me to uh, push your chair thinking that I'm helpful yeah, because I'm, that's I'm, important. Taking, I'm taking out your control. So uh, along those lines, um, so what are the things we should be doing to help, uh, you know, while bigger systemic approaches are being taken to be more accessible. But as a, as, as a friend, as a colleague, like, what should we be doing? Uh, Just uh, ask. To ask is, it, it's enough. Because this is, is very personal. You know, there are any, there are two persons, there are any two same persons. It's like, a, for me, I don't like when the people arrive and push my, my wheelchair. It's like, a, why you are doing it, no? It's just, I believe is always ask, do you need help or would you like something? And uh, I always, when I need help, I tell, please, uh, can you help me? Yeah. Other person maybe is more selfish or you know um, they need to someone offer this this help. Mm -hmm. But I believe it's just think that I, I am a normal person, you know. Uh, my wheelchair, I am sitting sit down in a wheelchair, but my wheelchair is not in my brain. It's just I use this device for move around but uh, I'm a normal person yes. but thank you yes. so much for and asking a cool one. About, and a beautiful one yeah so there are more questions coming and and one of them so people are very excited with every single thing you've shared so far so so I just want to stress that we we need it's it's odd that we have to you know create this space because sometimes this space is lacking uh, but it's so important that we are doing that now. 
Um, so one of the things that is coming a lot is that people are uh, very interested in knowing all the things that you have been telling us. So just so people know, we're gonna share an email with the resources that you've mentioned. Some of them will be in Spanish, so you just start practicing your Spanish. Others will might be in English, so good luck. Um, so here there is another question. How can we introduce this topic in our educational curricula? Like if you were, let's, let's pretend you are, uh, you know, uh, advising the Faculty of Forestry. Uh, what are the entry points that you recommend that need, needs to be covered um, if we want to make a change in the curriculum of any forestry related career or program? In the forestry program, oh wow, this is a very difficult question because I'm not expert in, a, in an education. But I believe, I believe, uh, talk about universal design, mm. it will be useful. Mm. Uh, talk about, for example, wayfinding or accessibility improvements, it will be useful as well. Um, and sen sensory uh, forest, I believe it will be uh, I feel very interested how we can promote in the in the way that um, I don't remember exactly. It's a Japanese name. Uh, That's okay. We can we can check later on. Yeah, but, but yeah, talk talk about the things. sensory forest. No, how uh -huh, uh -huh. how well the forest can improve the well-being in, in humans and yeah. of course how, we, how can improve the, the well-being in people with, uh, with disabilities or diversity. People. Mm. So we, we have to say bye uh, but before that just uh, I wonder if, if you want to say a bye or, or share any take home message at the end. Um, not well, uh, yes, I would like to uh, to show my my gratitude to the Muskin territory mm. uh, to bring me the opportunity for walk around uh, this ancient la lands. I'm, I feel uh, very honored to have this great opportunity. And thank you so much for, for this opportunity as well, for share my, my experience, my, my life in, in a wheelchair, my life in the forest. And I hope my love for the nature, uh, you know, or you can note my, my love for nature and, and their conservation, that is the most important in my research. Mm. And thank you so much, Estefania, for this opportunity. Thank you, Maria Jose. It's been a pleasure. And, and with uh, Maria Jose's words, uh, I just want to um, thank everyone for participating, in particular uh, Hisham and Sara for helping co-organize and open these spaces. And also uh, wishing Maria Jose the best uh, now and always. Please, everyone here, um, once you, once we finish this conversation, go and share Maria Jose's link. Uh, she needs to gather responses. And that's something you can do to help not only Maria Jose, but all the wheelchair users that also deserve, like everyone else, uh, a fair uh, access to nature. So with that, I want to say goodbye to everyone and un beso, María José. And yeah, until the next time. Thank you so much. Bye bye.